When we use a neural network for multi-class classification, sigmoid neurons kind of suck. When we only had two classes, we could use a single neuron to output 0 or 1. But if we have several labels, like 0 through 9 for classifying handwritten digits, or potentially way more labels for harder problems, we need a different representation. One of the most common approaches is to encode the labels as a one-hot vector, where we have a dimension for each label, and only one at a time should be switched on. For example here, we have a five-dimensional vector indicating that there were five possible labels, and for this particular point, dimension four is switched on, meaning that this point had the fourth label. In principle, an output layer made up of sigmoid neurons could be trained to produce this sort of output, but in practice there are a couple of problems. The first issue, illustrated here, is that it's quite possible for the sigmoid layer to output lots of relatively large values. In this case, 0.91 is the largest activation, which might indicate that we are predicting label 4, but we have an activation that's almost as large for label 3, and other activations that are also quite far from zero. And so if our neural network gave this sort of output, it would be rather hard to interpret the prediction. What we'd really like is for the output layer to produce zeros and ones, or failing that, for it to produce something that we can interpret as confidence in different possible labels. The other problem here comes when we try to train this sigmoid output layer. If our target is this one-hot vector, then we are trying, when we perform gradient descent, to push this activation toward 1 and all of the others toward 0. But if we calculate the deltas for some of these neurons, we get the surprising result that the neuron that is more wrong has a smaller delta. This happens because the derivative of the sigmoid function, illustrated in blue here, gets very small when we get far away from an input of zero. That means that even though the error for this dimension is large, because the function is so flat out here, the derivative is small, and so we're not able to make a large update by gradient descent. And so if a sigmoid output layer is confidently wrong, that's very hard to fix. A similar issue, known as the vanishing gradient problem, also comes up when we use sigmoid activations for hidden neurons, and we'll talk much more about vanishing gradients in a future video. In this video, I want to demonstrate an alternative combination of output activations and loss function that will solve both of these problems with a sigmoid output layer. Our new activation is known as a softmax, and it gets its name from behaving a little bit like finding a maximum. Softmax activations are computed on an entire layer rather than individually for each neuron, and this activation function only makes sense as the output layer for a classification problem. We should avoid using softmax activations for hidden layers. To compute softmax activations, we take the weighted sum of inputs xi for each node i in the output layer. We then divide them all by the sum of all those exponentiated inputs. The result is that raising e to each of these inputs will magnify differences between the inputs, and then dividing by the sum will normalize all of the activations so that they add up to 1. This has the result of pushing the largest input towards 1 and pushing the other inputs closer to 0, hence the similarity to max, which would choose just the single largest. When we use a softmax layer, that tends to produce outputs that are much more interpretable as a prediction, because we will tend to get output vectors that are much more likely to have a single value close to 1 and a lot of values close to 0. Also, since the values sum to 1, we can sometimes interpret them as the network's confidence in each of the possible predictions. 
but to make use of softmax activations, we want to combine it with a loss function that gives us effective gradient descent updates. And the best candidate for that turns out to be categorical cross-entropy. We define cross-entropy loss as minus the sum over the outputs of the target for that neuron times the natural log of its activation. But if we think for a moment about what this computes if we're using one-hot vectors for our targets, most of the dimensions will be zero, except for a one on the correct label, and so most of the terms in this sum will be zero, and it reduces to minus the log of the activation on the neuron that should have an output of one. We can call that neuron where we want the output to be one, T star, it's the one that we are actually targeting with our one hot vector, and we can think about the gradient of this loss function for both the neurons where we want the output to be one, and for the others where we want the output to be zero. To use this combination of categorical cross-entropy loss and softmax activation, we need to figure out how to compute the deltas for all of the output nodes, which will then serve as the starting point for backpropagation. So let's start by thinking about the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the activations. Since our loss function looks very different for T star than for any of the other output nodes, we'll look separately at partial derivatives for T star and for the other neurons. And so first we want to figure out how does the loss change with respect to the activation of the node whose label we want to be one. Well, that label's activation appears right here, and so we are taking the derivative of this function with respect to its input, and the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. So we get minus 1 over the activation, but in a moment it will help to have plugged in our formula for that activation, so let's do that now. And we get minus the inverse of this fraction with t star plugged in for the node. On the other hand, the derivative of the loss with respect to any of the other nodes is just zero because those activations don't appear in the loss formula. And this is why categorical cross entropy only works with an activation function like softmax, because if the delta for a node depended only on its own activation, then we would be performing no updates at all to any of the nodes where we wanted to output zero. But in the case of softmax, the activation for any neuron depends on the inputs to all of the neurons, and so even though we only have a non-zero partial derivative for this activation, we will still get non-zero deltas for all of the inputs. So now we need to figure out how do each of these inputs affect the activation of the T star neuron, which means determining the partial derivative of the T star activation with respect to both the T star input and each of the other inputs. So in both cases, we're taking the derivative of this activation, but in the first case, we're focusing on the variable that appears both on the top and in the sum, and in the second case, we're looking at one of the other variables that only appears in the denominator. For this derivative, we need to apply the quotient rule. So the derivative of this quotient is a prime b minus b prime a over b squared, where a prime means the derivative of e to the xi with respect to xi, while b prime means the derivative of this sum with respect to the xi that appears in one of its terms. 
And of note, both terms on the top have an e to the xt star that we can factor out. For some other node k, the derivative of the sum will still be e to the xk, but the derivative of the top will now be zero because this is a constant with respect to xk. Now to find the actual deltas for the output layer, we want the partial derivative of the loss with respect to each of the output layer's inputs. Each of those inputs affects all of the activations, but then only the activation for t star affects the loss. So when we apply the chain rule to the loss function, we end up with the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the activation of t star times the partial derivative of that activation with respect to each of the layer's inputs. When we write out this product for the t star node, we see lots of things we can cancel. The e to the x t star in the denominator cancels with the one that we can factor out from the difference. And the sum in this numerator cancels with one of the sums in the denominator. And we're left with the minus sign out front, and then these two terms in the numerator that we can split up and simplify further. And here we have, as the first term, exactly the activation for the t star node minus a second term that simplifies to 1. And so, as long as we have already computed and saved this activation on the forward pass, the delta for this node is incredibly easy to calculate. And it turns out that we'll get lots of the same simplifications when we work out the partial derivatives for the other neurons. We'll start by copying over these terms that we calculated before. When we start canceling terms here, we first lose both of the minus signs, and our sum in the numerator can cancel with 1 from the denominator, and our e to the xt star terms can also cancel. And what we're left with is exactly the formula for the activation of node k. So what we've derived here are formulas for computing the deltas for the node where the target was 1 and all of the other output layer nodes. And if we now think about how these deltas will perform as part of a gradient descent update, for the neuron where we wanted the target to be 1, we get a negative value for delta, and that value will be closer to zero the closer the activation gets to one. While for the others, where the output should be zero, we get a positive delta that gets smaller as the activation gets closer to zero. This means that when we take a step in the minus gradient direction, we will be increasing the activation where we need it to be one, and decreasing all of the others, and the amount that we change those activations by will be proportional to the size of the error that those neurons made in our most recent prediction. Which means that by combining soft max activations and categorical cross entropy losses, we can get outputs that make a lot of sense for classification problems and we can get gradients that will rapidly push those outputs towards the correct predictions.